Ya <tries> يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكلوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويكفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاس فوزا عظيما عباد الله اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من تين ثم قضى أجلا وأجل مسمى عنده ثم أنتم تمترون وهو الله في السماوات وفي الأرض يا لم سركم وجاركم ويا لم تكسبون وهو الذي جعلكم خلائف الارض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات واطلع لمن بانوا اذ قال لقومي يا قومي ان كان كبر عليكم مقامي وتذكيري بايات الله فهل لا توكلت فاجمعوا امركم وشركاؤكم ثم لا, لا يكون امركم عليكم غمه ثم اقضوا الي ولا تنصرون فان توليتم فما سالتكم من اجر ان اجري الا على الله وامرت ان اكون من المسلمين فكذبوه فنجينا وما معه في الفلك وجعلنا خلائف واغرقنا الذين كفروا الذين كفروا باياتنا فانصر كيف كان عاقبه المنذرين ثم بعثنا من بعد رسولا الى قومهم فجاءوا البينات فما كان ليؤمنوا بما كذبوا به من قبل كذلك نتبع على قلوب المقتدين ولقد اهلكنا القرون من قبلكم لما ظلموا وجاءتهم رسول بالبينات وما كانوا ليؤمنوا كذلك نجز قوم المجرمين فخلف من بعدهم خلفا ورثوا كتابا يا غذون ارض الازل ارضنا ويقولون سيكفروا لنا وان ياتيهم ارضا مثل مثاله يا اذو الم يعف عليهم موثقا كتابا ان لا يقول على الله الا الحق ودرس ما فيه ودار الاخره خير للذين يقولون يتقون افلا تاكلون ثم جعلناكم خلائف افلاد من بعدهم لننظر كيف تعملون يا ايها الذين امنوا اركعوا واسجدوا واعبدوا ربكم وافعلوا الخير لعلكم تفلحون وجاهدوا في الله حق جهاده هو اجتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من ارج من لتابيكم ابراهيم هو سماكم المسلمين من قبل وفي هذا ليكون رسول شهيدا عليكم وتكون شهداء على الناس فاقيموا الصلاه واتوا الزكاه واعتصموا بالله ومولاكم فنعم المولى ونعم النصير وقال الرسول من راى منكم المنكر فليجيروا بيده وان لم يستطع وبلسانه وان لم يستطع وبقلبه وذلك وعد اف الايمان ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون our praise is due to allah who has created you and and made the heavens and the earth and he created the zulmat one nur he created the darkness and light and then those who disbelieve equate with their lord others we thank allah who does not benefit from our faith and our lack of faith 
does not affect him and does not harm him. He is one. He is uniquely indivisible. He is soul. He does not depend on anything, whereas everything depends on him. He is not begotten and he does not beget. We thank and praise him. We seek forgiveness of our sins from him. We put all our trust in him. We seek our last protection against the evils of our arms and our heart. I bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone, the guidance of the righteous. And I bear witness that Muhammad is Allah's apostle and servant. I seek Allah's choices, blessings upon him, upon members of his worthy household, his courageous companions, and upon all those who will continue to follow their footsteps till the day of accounting. Oh, you will believe, fear Allah as you should be feared, and do not die except as Muslim. Oh, mankind, fear your Lord, who created you from one soul, and created from it its mate, and dispersed or brought out from both of them many males and females, fear Allah, whom you used to seek your mutual over you, an observer. Oh, you will believe, fear Allah, and speak words straight to the point. This will amend your deeds and be a means of deleting and forgiving your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has certainly attained a great achievement. Ibad Allah, fear your Lord, who created you from clay and then decreed a time and a specified time known to him, still you are in dispute. Allah is the one who is God in heaven and the earth. He knows your secrets and he knows what you make public. He knows what you earn. It is Allah who has made you his vigilant on earth and has placed you one above the other in terms of gift, darajat, so that it will be a trial for you over what he has given you. Verily, Allah is stiff, swift in punishment. He is also forgiving, merciful. I recite to them the news of Noah, when he to his people, oh my people. If my residence and my reminding you of the sons of Allah has become burdensome upon you, then I rely upon Allah. So resolve upon your plan and call upon your deities. Then let not your plan be obscure to you. Then carry it out upon me and do not give me any respite. And if you turn away from my advice, then no payment do I ask from you. My reward is only from Allah. And I've been commanded to be one of the Muslims. But his people denied him. So we saved him and those with him in the ship and made them successors. And we drowned those who denied our signs. Then see how was the end of those who were warned us. Then we sent after him messengers to their peoples. And they came to them with clear proofs. But they were not to believe in that which they had denied before. That is how we sealed over their hearts because they are transgressions. And we had already destroyed generations before you when they wronged themselves and their messengers. When their messengers came to them with clear proofs, they wronged him, them, and they did not believe in them. That is why we recompense the criminal people. And they have followed them, successors, who inherited the scripture while taking the commodities of this lower life and saying, it will be given for us. And if an offer like it comes to them, they will again take it. Was not the covenant of the scripture taken from them that they will not say anything about Allah except the truth? And they studied what was in the scripture and the home of the hereafter is better for those who fear Allah. So, will you not use your reason? Then, we make you inherit them. You became you are now their successors in the land after them so that we will observe what and how you will do. So that you will, we will observe what and how you will do. Oh, yeah, we believe. Bow, prostrate, worship your Lord and do good so that you'll be successful and strive for Allah with the striving due to him. He has chosen you. He has not put upon you difficulty in your religion. It is the religion of your father Ibrahim, who named you Muslim before and now, so that 
the messenger will be a witness over you and you will be witnesses over the people. Therefore, establish prayer and give zakah and hold fast to Allah is your protector. Excellent is the E as a protector. Excellent is Allah as a helper. And the messenger said, any one of you that sees evil, let him change it with his hand. If he's not able to do so with his mouth, and if he's still not capable of doing this with his mind, but this is the weakest of faith. Allah commands justice, the doing of good, liberality between kid and kin, Allah forbids indecency, rebellion, and oppression. Allah admonishes you so that you may take heed. I bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah alone, and that Muhammad is Allah's apostle and servant. The title of this khutbah is Come, let us change the world like we did last week. And the, the focus is understanding Khilafah and Shahada as requirement for changing the world. Changing the world is an obligation of Muslims based on two natural reasons. And they are the Khilafah and then Shahada. Khilafah makes us human beings who are on this earth as Khulafa of Allah, as representatives, as the vigilant of Allah. As Allah says in Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 30, when he told the angels that I'm going to place on earth Khalifa. So the purpose of our creation is to be the vigilant of Allah on earth. And in Ayah 165, Surah Al-An'am, he also says, he is the one who has made you his vigilant on earth and has made you, calibrated you one above the other, as we read uh, in the first part of the khutbah. We are also Muslims. who are Allah's witnesses over other human beings to supervise and ensure their fulfillment of the amana and the uqud, that is trust and covenants of the Khilafah. We read that in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 143, Surah al Aj, Ayah 78, Surah Al-Azab, Ayah 72 to 73. Since these two are inseparable, we must have a good understanding of the conditions of being Allah's vigilant as human beings and his witnesses against other human beings as Muslims. The focus of this khutbah is therefore an attempt to read some of the undeniable evidences of the obligation to change the world from the Quran and challenge us to produce any other group of people apart from the Muslims who should precede us in engaging the world in all matters particular in order to change the world positively as changed by our Lord, as charged by our Lord and Creator as our Jalla. This khutbah is the commencement of the discharge of our responsibility of the most urgent political education as a prelude to living a conscious Muslim life and benefiting from the earthly rewards of peace as we struggle to create a paradise on earth and heavenly rewards of admission into the paradise of our earthly dreams and pursuit. Our goal is to raise the consciousness of Muslims to the urgent need to seek a better world from its managers and cooperate with the managers to create a better world, failing which we demand for the authority to manage the world better on behalf of all and for the good of all. The purpose of starting this khutbah is to make you realize the, the fact that it is your responsibility to lead the world, to be the leaders of the world like the predecessors were. And if you cannot do that, to know how to operate in the world by cooperating with those who are managing the world now, the political gladiators and actors, and by trying to correct them, failing which you make a demand to hand over authority to you 
This is how Muslims live their lives. For 13 years, they were training, they were cooperating. For 10 years, they demanded the leadership of the world, and they got it. So this is the purpose. The following seven paradigms are therefore imperative platforms for the understanding of this obligation. They are also toolkits for the operationalization of the obligation to change the world. Number one, we are generally here as humans to succeed the genes. When Allah told the angels that I'm going to place on earth Khalifa, the angels retorted, you are going to place down in one who will do facade, corruption, and spill blood. This is what the jinns did when they were in this world. So we came here as their successors. And the reason, the implication of this is we must not do what the jinns did to make Allah destroy them. We must not contribute to corruption. Muslim we also kill people. Muslim we also shoot men, kidnap, like Kufar we do. Why? Because Shaitan is interested more in the Muslims than in the non-Muslims. The non-Muslims are in his pocket. They are he's fully in control of their lives. So they have nowhere to go after living this world but hell. But Muslims have the chance to listen to Allah and obey him and engage Shaitan. But we make Muslim to be attracted to crimes, shedding of blood, kidnapping, and all the rest of the insecurity matters so that they will make little money. And so they will be unwilling to change their ways. What is the solution to this? Allah says the unbelievers fight in the cause of Tawhud. The believers fight in cause of Allah. Fight you all together, the awliya of shaitan, the eyes of shaitan, because the scheming of shaitan is, the plot of shaitan is weak. Allah shows you that you must engage shaitan and his children among jinns, among men, all those who are not believers, you must engage them in continuous battle. You must not join them. And the least you can do is to hate what they do if you cannot physically change them. So engaging the world and those who do evils in the world is the art and is compulsory. When you do that, you are engaging shaitan. And if you die doing that, you enter Jannah. If you, if you survive avoiding it, you take a chance. Number two, we are also successors to the people of Nu'ah, who were also succeeded by the people of Ad, who were succeeded by Thamud and the Arabs, the Quraysh. We have succeeded all of them. The implication of this is that Allah says in Surah Yunus, Ayah 14, we made you successors in the land after all these people in history for one reason, so that we may observe how you will manage the world. The implication of this is that whatever the people in history did to make Allah destroy them, we must not do. When we read history, we are reading Paradigms. We are reading things that people have done to make them succeed in life and things they did to make them fail and to be destroyed so that we take a stand. Number three, the duties and requirements for success in this divine work are knowledge and faith, vigilance and fear mixed with hope. That in Ayah 39, Surah Al-Fatir, Surah 35. Number four, we are here to be observed as we succeed the previous generations in power and wealth, both as individuals and as corporate group. Allah gave us the example of Dawood as Khalifa in Ayah 26 of Surah Tassad, Surah 38. And Allah also gave us a paradigm in Surah Al-Adid, Ayah 7, where Allah says, believe in Allah and his messenger and spend out of that in which he has made you successors. 
You didn't create the wealth of the world. You didn't create the resources of the world. You came to inherit it because people have used these words before. What you call gold, diamond, platinum, and so on today were just mere stones that they were using, even in the time of Suleiman, to build houses. They were mere stones. They became something else to you. And in Surah to Kaf, Allah says, Indeed, we have placed everything that is on this earth to be the glittering show for it, beauty for the earth, but test for you. Who among you will use these resources over which we kill one another, over which we are doing elections, we are fighting, we are abusing each other, and so on, because we want to corner these resources. Allah says this resources is to test you. Who among you is going to be righteous? Five, that you are witnesses over mankind means that we should not do what others have done and we should be conscious of the fact that other things are witnessing us too. Our, our skin, our arms, our legs, the earth, the earth, the mountains, everything is a witness of us. We should be conscious of how to go back to Allah and account for the way we use all this. The heavens, the earth, our hands and legs. On the day of judgment when the mouth will not talk, your hand will talk, your leg will bear witness. What are we concluding from here? We are saying that the world has reached the stage which it reached before when Allah considered messengers to come and solve problem. So Al Fasad Fil Barri Walibar, Bima Kasabat Aidi Nas, Li the Kumba the Lady Amilu, La Lam Yarjun. Corruption has appeared on land and sea because of what we have done. There's too much trouble because of what we did before. We defied a human being in twenty fifteen. And Allah told us that He was not God. That Allah is God. We are starting again in 2022, ahead of 2023. But we have two problems. Muslims are divided into groups concerning democracy. Democracy appears to be the only feasible alternative to changing a bad situation because every power is in terms of government. But some of us believe that democracy is kufru. Therefore, people should not participate as Muslims. But my argument is that this is a script. It's an odious and satanic script. Propagated and written. Written and propagated by the oligarchs and the monarchies in the Gulf. So that people will not come together and use this democracy to change oligarchy in the Gulf. And so they train people to come and tell us that democracy is kufu, and we have played the, the, the script for too long, and it is time to change this narrative. The argument, the second argument is that we are reading stories. The longest and the most detailed in the Quran is the stories of Yusuf and his brothers. Yusuf was a Jew, alayhi salatu was salam. He was imprisoned in Egypt. Egypt was a foreign land. <clears throat> he was a prisoner. He had talent. The king had problem. The land had problem. He was consulted. He solved the problem. He was offered freedom from the prison and then political appointment. Yusuf did not say this is a kufu land. The people are kufa. He offered his services. He, he secured his liberty. We are all Yusuf in a foreign land. There is a lot of kufru going on. Muslims have faith-based capacity to change the world. You are running away from the only means available for now to change the world. You cannot call democracy kufru, ask Muslims not to vote, ask Muslims not to participate, so that shaitan would give power to the kufar and one day somebody will just raise a motion in the house that 
Nobody should call Adam. And that will be it. That will be it. Anybody that uses hijab should go to jail. And that will be it. Nobody should go to Hajj. That will be a waste of resources. And that will be it. And you will have caused it. So we say, we learn from Yusuf that we will participate. If it is a war, we will use our PVC as weapon to fight it. If it is a game, it is a card. It's a game of card. It is a, the PVC is a card. Then you use it to play the game. Finally, we want to say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not introduce Gazwat. But he fought Badri when he had never fought any war before. He consulted with people. We were fighting like Kufar that they were. The only thing Islam introduced to battles, warfare, was modification, not to kill and maim. It was a Kufru system. This democracy too may be Kufru, but it could be modified. There is nothing that is human that cannot change, as long as the humans are ready to change. So the battle is beginning. Make sure it is a Muslim. You can remind him that if we can correct Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made mistake in prayer. Muslims called his attention to it. He wanted to make mistake in Badri, he was corrected. He wanted to make mistake in Uhud, he was corrected. Allah scolded him. If we could correct Abu Bakr, if we could correct Umar, if we could correct our Imam, we can correct anybody. But when you put a non-Muslim there, any attempt to correct him will be seen as treachery, rebellion, and treason. You could go to jail. So, it must be a Muslim. Who it is, leave it to Allah. Play the game. Whether there is going to be election or not, play the game. May Allah make us instruments of change. May Allah give us success. Rabbana taqabbal minna ini kanta samiyun ali. Wa tuba ali ini kanta tawa burrahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya asana. Wa fi al-akhirati asana tawakina adha bannar. Subhanaka Allahumma bi amdik. Wa nashra la ilaha ila anta. Wa nastafriku na tubi laik. Subhanahu wa bikarabil ayasfum. Wa salamun ala al-mursalim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin.